So you're taking fire for pyrotechnics, like mm-hmm. a rock show, mind you. Mm-hmm. Fire, you're doing uh, illusion magic, suggestion to make the crowd go wild. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're not specialized in, like, damage dealing. You're specialized in, like, putting on a really fucking awesome show. Yeah. But in doing so, somebody's a pyrotechnics expert. Wizards of the Coast has released even more 1D&D uh, playtest material. Oh boy. I... And everyone rejoiced. I mean, rejoiced as much as uh, any time Wizards announces new rules or mechanics for Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, not like when they rejoice when you can get your favorite Lord of the Ring character in a Magic the Gathering card? Oh, yeah, that was great stuff, dude. <laughs> that was good stuff. Um, but anyway, we did talk about the initial uh, stuff for the different uh, uh, archetypal characters uh, building that you could do. This time, they've released uh, something on expert classes. And you'd probably sit there and say, what are expert classes? Because <laughs> that's a No, term. I'm letting you say what are expert classes, because you just did. Okay. But, what but... are expert classes? <laughs> so, the first thing that's probably worth noting is that uh, in the one D and D test material, they're trying to put the different uh, classes of character into class groups, uh, which will be a uh, a set that has certain features and themes that are in common. Uh, and the expert class, which they say are polymaths who have the expertise feature and elements of other classes, we can talk about expertise in a minute. Um, and they would refer to the Bard, the Ranger, and the Rogue. Um, the, uh, they also say that the Artificer would be an expert class. They don't have rules in it for this. Uh, yeah, I mean, they would be an expert in their, their trade, I guess, so. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking that they might be considering these more to the, uh, like, the specialist kind of category, where there's certain things that they're really good at, or that they would provide some kind of a supporting role. The, the other three classes are for mages, priests, and warriors, uh, which I think are kind of straightforward, uh, the mages being about arcane magic, Priests being stewards of divine and primal magics, focusing on healing and utility, and warriors being masters of combat. Uh, so you can kind of figure that out, about where everybody falls into that category. But this is specifically focusing on experts. Now, uh, I'm not, we're not going to go over the whole 37 pages here, because... Uh, yeah, let's, let's not. Let's not. Maybe on a live stream sometime. Maybe on a live stream, or also, maybe we can piece... Maybe we can take some of these pieces later on, but right now we just can't go over all the feats and the rules and spell lists and all that right now. Bards are going to be changing up a little bit uh, if they stick with this stuff. Um, the basics... The basics are not really anything different. You've got the 1d8 uh, hit points per bard level. Uh, you know, you have uh, dexterity and charisma are like your, your main things that you want to be able to do. Uh, bardic inspiration is still a thing. However, Alex, bardic inspiration works a little differently now than it, it pretty than it used to. If you remember, bardic inspiration used to be like I think it was a bonus action you could take where you would say to like your you know compatriot like for this next minute if you want to do a, a test or a saving throw or something like that skill check you can add this die. Uh, and yeah. you can you can choose that. I think it's actually improved by the rules that okay. they're they're doing here. Um, you can do it in a couple ways. A couple things. So, you can boost a d20 test, which means whenever uh, when another creature within 60 feet of you that can see or hear you fails a test, you can use your reaction to give the creature a bardic inspiration die. The creature rolls that die and adds the number rolled to the d20, potentially turning the failure into a success. Now, uh, one the of, issue yes. I have with that yes. becomes 
You're not supposed to generally know if you pass or fail a test. Yeah, that's right away. Yeah. It, this so in this case, about... yeah. you need to know, like, if you're doing a self check. Right. I, as a DM, am probably not going to tell you if you pass or fail that. Right. This Cause... reaction specifically comes after you failed. <laughs> right. <laughs> like... So. Yeah. You, I feel like you'd get arguments from the players using it. Be like, oh, well, you should have told me they failed. And right. it's like, no, because you're not supposed to know whether you pass or fail, like a knowledge check or a stealth check or anything like that. Because your player doesn't know what they don't know. Or your character doesn't right. know what they don't know. Yeah. Uh, I always describe it, even when people pass stealth checks, I'm like, you think you're being very sneaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, it's like, so that way it's, it, like, even if you succeed that, I'm gonna let you think. And if you fail it, I'm gonna let you think that yeah. you're being very sneaky. Right. Because your character's trying to be sneaky, so you're thinking you're doing a damn good job. <laughs> Unless you roll yeah. really bad, I'm like, well, you step on a twig really loudly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the thing about it is, uh, it, it the way I understand it is that the change here is straight up that you just find out and then you get to make your reaction. I feel like it should just be as a reaction you can add this if you think they fail instead. Right, right. You know, you can just add this if you want to. Yeah. Um, and not like if they fail their test. Because it's like, oh yeah, you've been poisoned. Wait one second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm adding this to their thing. You know? And, I mean, we're, we're gonna get into the uh, the fact that for a lot of this, it seems like you might as well just use this as much as physically possible, because why not? Every time somebody yeah. fails everything. Um, the other usage, too, by the way, is uh, healing, which is that immediately after... Uh, a creature you can see or here takes damage. You can use your reaction to roll uh, your die and restore a number of hit points to the creature directly. Uh, that so... seems a little OP. <laughs> Doesn't it? Uh, yeah, the bard has some OP stuff going on, actually, <laughs> in this. How much do they get to use the bardic, uh, bardic inspiration? Oh, that also changes, because it used to be a tied to your charisma modifier. Now it's mm -hmm. actually it's tied to your proficiency bonus. So you get a, an inspiration die uh, num equal to the number uh, of proficiency bonus, and then you regain them all on a long rest. So to give you a, an idea, it would start off at 2 at first level. It goes up to 6 by the time you're at 20th. And I mean, that's not a lot, but it can definitely change the outcome of a lot of things but i yeah i will say though by the time you get to like level 17 and you have a six times per long rest where you can use a d12 to is just it heal per a long rest or per short rest long rest okay long rest um they are also and i won't go too much into it the uh the level cap ability for these classes really happens at level 18 now and then by the time you get to 20 you get an epic boon which is something we can go into at a, a later time but at any rate uh so there is that uh and then what else was the really interesting thing oh yeah songs of rest is now songs of restoration uh what okay what used to happen I know this from playing a bard, is that when you would do a rest, you could basically uh, sit down, hum a little jaunty tune, and you would be able to uh, add another like hit die to people's uh, restoration of their hit points. Yeah. That's not how this works now. What happens instead is that at 2nd, 4th, 6th, 8th, and 10th level, you just get a like some kind of healing spell that uh is always prepared and does not count against the number of spells that you can have that you can prepare so like, so why even call it a spell exactly exactly uh well because i think it's still going to use up your slots but it's not going to count against the number that you can like learn because it's just instantly prepared um okay 
Healing Word, Lesser Restoration, Mass Healing Word, Freedom of Movement, and Greater Restoration. So you basically you auto-get those at those levels. Okay. So there's that. Um, and uh, what was the... Oh, yeah. Another thing that seems kind of OP. Uh, magical Secrets. Um, you don't get it as much. It only shows up at 11th and 15th level. But... It is way better. <laughs> it is okay. way better. So, if you remember Magical Secrets before, uh, basically, periodically, the Bard would get access to two spells from any spell list. They would learn those. They become part of their repertoire. Cool. You can do wizard magic now. Yeah. This, this is how Magical Secrets works now. Ahem. <clears throat> You have collected magical knowledge from a wide spectrum of disciplines. Choose a spell list, so arcane, divine, or primal. Whenever you prepare spells for this class, up to two of the spells you prepare can be from the chosen list and from any school of magic. The prepared spells otherwise follow the rules of your bard spellcasting feature. So, in a nutshell, if I say I want to take the arcane spell list, I can change out Whatever those two spells are from the arcane spell list, every time I can prepare spells. So, like during a long rest, just change them up whenever. So, just daily, you can take two spells from an arcane spell list. Basically. Um, basically. Now, does this mean you only get two, or does that number increase as you get better uh, arcane well, knowledge? Or... Well, you, you, get, you get the two which you can keep changing out for any other spell you want as time goes on. But then at 15th level, when you get the further magical secrets, you choose another list, and you get two spells from that. So basically... So it's only two, and then you get another spell list with, later that with, you can also get two? With two others, yes. yes. What if I pick the same spell list? You have to do one you didn't choose. Okay, they, but they I specify. would... Well, that's dumb. Just although, give me four arcane spells. <laughs> although, although, here's the thing. There is a little bit of uh, overlap. Some spells appear on multiple lists. Yes. So, like, for me, I might think to do, like, the primal spell list. Because there are some arcane-ish kind of spells that are also on the primal list. But, but I'm healing spells. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so... For me, though, I'm thinking, like, well, that works out pretty great, because one day I can just say, I want to do the Find Familiar spell, which then just, like, stays with me after I've done it. And then yeah. I can change it out, and I, I don't have to take it again until, like, my Familiar dies. Uh, or mm. the, tensor's, uh, the, the Tensor's floating disc or anything like that. You know, I could just use those. Um, so, not bad. Or, hell, just get Phantom Steed. You get your Phantom there Steed you for the day, and then if you're not traveling... Don't take it the next time. So, uh, much more, uh, much more variation in how you can utilize it. Uh, than yeah, spontaneous casters tend to be a lot more versatile, anyways, uh, because it's just you know this many spells. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I, d I don't. Does a bard have to prepare their spells, or do they just spontaneous cast? The bard, as I understand it, would just learn spells. Uh, as they accrue them from their list, which isn't a okay. huge list, but but they don't get to change them. The only time you'd get to change them in in five e is you can switch out one spell when you level up. So this would give you the ability to swap out two of your spells daily. That are from any from from that entire spell list. Yeah. Okay. Which, which and it's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it also feels like they're you're going to be able to you know switch that up more than bards used to because you kind of just had to take what you you had. Um, College of Lore is the subclass that they uh, have for this, which is always a classic. For the most part, this is pretty straightforward. Cutting words again, you can use it to um, uh, basically subtract from the roles of creatures. It's very good ability. Um, Cunning Inspiration at 6th level, uh, where when any creature rolls your Bardic Inspiration die, they can roll the die twice and use the higher of the two. So it's almost like you're getting um, advantage on your, your Bardic die. 10th um, level is cool, though. I will give it. They have improved Cutting Words. 
Uh, whenever you use your cutting words feature on a creature, you can deal psychic damage to that creature equal to the number rolled on the Bardic Inspiration die plus your Charisma modifier. So just, <laughs> just, I reduce your damage also, fuck you in the face, and here's some psychic damage back at you so immediately. So, the cutting words uses your Bardic Inspiration? It does. Cutting okay. words is, is, you can use it as a reaction with a Bardic Inspiration die. You roll your die, and you reduce, like, an ability check or an attack roll. Yeah, no, I just didn't realize you could use it with the Bardic Inspiration oh, yeah. to make it a reaction. That's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's specifically for your Bardic Inspiration. Now, when you get to level 10, not only do you reduce that down, but then you also just do some direct psychic damage to the creature. <laughs> I feel like you can make a build where you taunt people and then, you know, cutting words them. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I gotta say, with, like, what the Bardic Inspiration die is, plus your Charisma modifier, that's a chunk of damage. 14th level, you have Peerless Skill in College of Lore, and what that says is when you make an ability check and fail, you can expend one of your Bardic Inspiration, roll it, and uh, add the number to the ability check, potentially turning it into a success. You do that for yourself. If it fails, it the, the die is not expended. So. so what I'm hearing from all of this right now is that you just make a party of bards for real. Yep. Pretty much. You just much. make a quartet, and you just, everyone's bardic inspiration everything all, all the time. All the time. And you just, I, I want, I want to try this with a party of bards. I think that a uh, party of bards would actually seem to be a really good thing. Like, And, and oh, by the way, too, because I wanted to make it clear, is that there are a few things like Thunder Wave that they don't get for spells anymore, but, like, there are things like Haste and Hex that you now get. <laughs> yeah, but also, especially if you were to go the route of having a three-bard party yeah. with lore for magic secrets it's suddenly you have access to the other things you still have access to all these spells oh and yeah if you're all taking different school uh schools of magic that you can pull from yeah right well, you're not losing out anywhere right you'd have to wait till 11th level to unlock those but you know you could probably hang on pretty easily you know you got you got Is some that when stuff. you get your first Magical, magical secret. Yeah, that's when you get magical secrets. So you, okay, so you got to run the it only low issue. Level. Yeah, the only issue with the bard would be then you don't have a tank. You don't have a tank unless maybe you know, when they do like a college of swords or something, or they come out with that. Maybe they maybe have a front line. But if you can do a if you can make a battle bard, yep. Um, <laughs> And just have one person being the, the punk front man and the other people being the backups and the, the guitarists and whatnot. The backup singer. <laughs> yeah. You I mean, literally, you literally have a band and it's just an entire yeah. band that's made of bards. And you just yeah. yeah, that's terrific. I can't believe you're, you're you're on the road. You're traveling musicians, yeah. minstrels. And I think it's important you, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you write your own ballads after you defeat the dragon. And I mean, the, the thing is, is that as far as spell casting goes, while the bard doesn't necessarily have the kind of lists that some of the other ones do, um, they do get up to ninth level spells by the end. Uh, and and oh, yeah. a, a fair chunk of spells and cantrips that they have available. And some of the suggested ones that they have for like higher level literally are power word kill mass suggestion reverse gravity um <laughs> animate objects uh some pretty would... pretty good stuff polymorph you get polymorph here is my idea for a party of bards mm -hmm. all the spells you take and everything are designed in theory to put on our performance yes so you're taking fire for pyrotechnics like mm -hmm. a rock show, mind you. Mm -hmm. Fire, you're doing uh, illusion magic, suggestion to make the crowd go wild. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not specialized in like damage dealing, you're specialized in like putting on a really fucking awesome show. Yeah. But in doing so, somebody's a pyrotechnics expert. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you've got a lot of fire and stuff as well. Or maybe you've got like, you can summon creatures because, you know, 
You have them do menial tasks for you. Sure. Or do, do things presentable. So, you know, you could really do, like, a rock band that puts on their own stage show and, you know, it's like Rammstein but bards. <laughs> Bardstein. Bar- oh my God. Bardstein. Yes, Bardstein. <laughs> Bardstein. And the the whole thing is just doing Duhas. The whole thing is just Duhas. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's the Bard. Uh, we've we've already talked about this for a little while, so I think we'll come back, talk a little bit about the Ranger and the Rogue in some uh, future episodes. 